the chaos in Ukraine, as well as the dramatic deployments to the rest of Eastern Europe, no doubt has everyone wondering how the world at large will fare. Yet a general anxiety doesn't excuse our leaders or journalists from the duty of saying precisely what they mean, and hence providing the sober assessment we deserve. Chief among the evasions, both the press and the Pentagon would be well advised to eschew in this regard, is the word escalate. Coined on the assumption that it was the verb from which the trademark turned common noun escalator might have been derived, the verb escalate made its debut in 1922 in the British literary magazine Granta, according to the Oxford English Dictionary. Back then, it meant simply to travel on the moving staircase itself, but by 1959, it had begun to be used in a more geopolitically portentous sense, specifically to develop from conventional warfare to nuclear warfare. A few years after this putative first use in The Guardian, Herman Kahn, a nuclear strategist and systems theorist, expounded the concept further, arguing in his book, thinking about the unthinkable, that wars had a way of ascending through various levels, with each side upping the ante as it engaged the other. And by this piecemeal process of escalation, the unthinkable wasn't so unthinkable anymore. Still, as the decades passed, lesser and considerably less distinguished persons in omnifarious fields of endeavor seized upon the jargonistic term escalate and started to use it in decreasingly justifiable ways. So widespread was the metastasis that it actually managed to catch the attention of one Bruce Fraser, who in his 1973 revision of Ernest Gower's The Complete Plain Words, condemned the derivative noun escalation as a spurious substitute for the word growth, at least in workaday civil service affairs. Other commentators would follow suit, decrying the pretentiousness of escalate when used in place of such words as increase or accelerate. On the face of it then, one might be tempted to pardon the use of escalate in corporate settings to denote the process of referring a matter to higher and higher levels of management. That is, if the word refer didn't suffice already. And so it too is a usage that belongs in the discard right along with the escalating speed of a car and the escalating wages in the service sector. Okay, fair enough, you might be thinking, but how exactly do any of these criticisms bear at all upon the use of the word at the moment, particularly at a time when the specter of nuclear war has been raised once again? Well, the problem with vogue words, as we've seen from previous discussions, is not only that they tend to be overused by definition, but also that they tend to be used in inappropriate contexts. And the truth about Escalate is that even restricting the word to matters of war, it tends to be used as an all-purpose space filler, where the writer or speaker hasn't quite come to terms with what she wants to say. And to be fair, in this way it's perhaps no different from any other covering word, Wilson Follett's label in his 1966 Modern American Usage for terms whose generality and vagueness will cover a variety of possible particulars. For instance, a verb like contact can cover emailing, snail mailing, talking on the phone, speaking face-to-face, -face, and using a carrier pigeon. Nouns like transportation, planes, trains, and automobiles. If truth be told, they can be a valuable kind of word when options need to be left open. But if, as with respect to Escalade and its cognates, the word is meant to paper over unpleasant truths, the word is worse than vague. It's a euphemism. And indeed, not only is Escalate listed among several such specimens in Hugh Rawson's 1981 Dictionary of Euphemisms and Other Double Talk, but this past week's issue of The Economist described the word escalation as a hygienic word for a dirty and potentially catastrophic reality. Of course, even where the immediate reality isn't so terrifying, writers and speakers all throughout the media tend to shrink from saying what they really mean in this respect. Sometimes because they haven't figured out what to say, others because they have. And all too often I've seen or heard the word escalate, escalation, or escalatory in contexts where aggravate, exacerbate, worsen, devolve, deteriorate, intensify, or inflame or their cognates might have been more precise. Where a single word won't do, what exactly is the problem with describing a certain situation or conflict as having become more savage, destructive, hostile, severe, dangerous, sanguinary, or violent? None have the sheen of escalated in all its Latin luster, to be sure, but reality hardly needs an attractive raiment. Let's consider some examples, ranging from the regrettable to the risible. Our first sentence from The Economist says, Chillingly, Mr. Putin all but threatened nuclear escalation against the West after America and its allies sent additional troops to reinforce the eastern flank of NATO. The use of nuclear weapons. Putin threatened to use his nuclear weapons. No question about it. And of course we all remember when the Russian president ordered his Ministry of Defense to put his nuclear deterrence forces on high alert, an action that the Pentagon and the White House described as escalatory. Personally, I would have chosen a word like inflammatory, 
Of course, a contentious government official might object that escalatory carries the sense of a manner calculated or likely to make hostilities worse or create anxiety. I leave it to semanticists far more subtle than I to explain how that is in any way different from the connotations of inflammatory. Our next sentence comes from the New York Times. But President Biden wisely refused to escalate, canceled a planned missile test, and repeated that the United States has not pledged to defend Ukraine with troops. Here I think a more accurate phrase would have been respond in kind. That is, Biden chose not to elevate our own nuclear posture in response to Putin's announcement, or do anything else indicating a similar readiness to resort to nuclear weapons. Our next one comes from the BBC. Maximenko was a drop in a river of people that began flowing into Lviv when Russia invaded and swelled over the past few days as Russian forces escalated their campaign of bombing against Ukrainian civilians. I don't see whether the word intensified or continued if that was the purport wouldn't have fit better. And finally, just to switch gears, over time, however, rising rents, increased urban density, and escalating fees for trucks in the city posed challenges. Again, increasing or rising would have been just fine. I actually encourage you to try this exercise on your own. You'll undoubtedly have plenty of opportunities as Escalate continues its apparent bid to be the 2022 word of the year. In a sense, it typifies how so many take up scintillating terms as though they possess some talismanic power, without fully paying heed to the many implications they contain. The no-fly zone might be considered another one whose technicality belies its belligerent significance. Look, I'm not calling for a ban on Escalate. I'm simply calling for a more conscientious use of language, the kind of conscientiousness that can prevent escalation altogether. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon.